Oh my god, hey. Hello. It's raining today. It is. Because it's London and it does that yep. all the time. Yep. I joke. However, today it is raining. Check the Some Like It Hot umbrella, which should say Some Like It Dry. Um, however, we are here on the Strand yes. because we are spending the day where, Aaron James? At the Strand Palace Hotel. At the Strand Palace I Hotel. I said theatre. It's so weird not talking about a theatre. I mean, this is theatre related, but still. I know, unusual for us. Yeah. It's it's obviously a stagey day, but it's a stagey I mean, day that begins at a hotel. Ooh. And you will find out more. But we are here at the Strand Palace Hotel on the Strand in London uh, because they have a partnership with the London return of Everybody's Talking About Jamie yeah. at the Peacock Theatre. And so we're going to be celebrating all things Everybody's Talking About Jamie at the Strand Palace Hotel. There will be afternoon tea. There will be makeup. There will be plenty to show you. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah, I've seen Jamie crazy amounts of times, so yes. Always. We'll tell you more about the show and our experience with it later, but for now we're going to go into the hotel that you cannot see behind us because all you can see is Umbrella. I'm great at this. Also, I am holding this because I forgot to bring my other microphone. Don't at me, tiny people in my camera. You're meant to be my friends. Okay, I just need to share this tea journey with you because I am drinking this one here, the White Peony with Rosebuds. I asked for whatever was the sweetest and the fruitiest because I'm not much of a hot drinks person. I despise coffee. I am warming to tea, but this tea alone has me converted. This is delicious and I would drink gallons of it and that is revolutionary for me. So just documenting this moment for posterity. I like tea now, this one, this one specifically. Also, how cute is this? This little cake thing, origamis into a menu, and it is a theater-themed menu, spot the mask. We have act one, which is savory. Uh, a scone intermission, I love that. I do say scone, I am from the south, don't at me. Um, and act two, which is sweet, and you can see all of the options there. Exciting flavors. For me, afternoon tea is all about the scones, so particularly excited for those, but I will let you know what it's all like. Um, I love that there's something called the dress rehearsal, actor's illusion, curtain call, tutu tartlet. That is cute. I initially, I'm going to show you what happened here. So I read that, look, stagehand sausage, that's not right. Stagehand sausage roll, that's a bit better, but still, still slightly dubious. And we also have uh, a vegan menu alternative here that still has this act one, act two, cute little thing going on. Stagehand's vegan sausage roll. Is that better? Banana drama and break a leg. I don't think I have either of those in the limelight. Banana drama. I mean, that's just a fun name, isn't it? Banana drama. And you can also see the full tea selection here as well. Look at all of those. I actually struggle to choose because multiple sound lovely. I can't get over how much I like tea now. This is ridiculous. Erin's drinking the cocktail. Mm. The camera. Did you say it has pop rocks? Yeah, I think so. My mouth is bubbling. Eventful. How to make a cocktail theatrical make it an immersive experience. <laughs> this is sometimes the strangeness of an afternoon tea is you're like, yes, Prosecco and cocktail and tea and you're bouncing between them. And it's like, yes, li I like this, I like this, I also like this, but it's a little bit unusual to go between them, just a touch. I mean, I'm not, I'm not complaining. That sounded like complaining, didn't it? I'm not doing that. Scone for you, tiny people on my camera. I just love scones. Mm. Mm. I do, I do believe jam first. It's not, I'm not going to say it's correct. I'm not bold enough to like say that's the right way to do it. I do think it's easier. It's just me. If you don't know, now you know. This is a very contentious topic in the UK. Mm. 
Okay, here at the Strand Palace Hotel, we are readying for our next event, which is a makeup demonstration. But I wanted to talk you through my favourite items from this theatre themed afternoon tea. The scones, obviously amazing and filling. My goodness. Um, of the sweet things, uh, I did like the actor's illusion just because uh, they spoke to us a bit about the theory and like the decisions behind this afternoon tea and the idea of like a play within a play and like things having multiple layers and deeper meanings. So this was, it looked like a little peanut butter and jam sandwich and it was actually cake. Um, it had Madeira sponge. And I don't know that it tasted a million miles from what it looked like. It just tasted like a sweeter peanut butter and jam sandwich. So it wasn't that complete dissonance between like what you're seeing and what you're eating. But it was delicious. I also liked the dress rehearsal. I think that was probably my favorite of the desserts. I loved everything savory. I think I actually like the savory were my bigger highlights than the sweet, which is unusual for me but it was an excellent sausage roll. Um, uh, the beetroot hummus, the feta in this, my goodness. Um, I enjoyed very much the chicken in the brioche as well. And, oh, this I started with. I'm not a big prawns person, but this was delicious. Loved. We have just been asked if one of us would like to be a model for a makeup drag transformation. In 12 minutes, I think. In 12 minutes, to replicate what they do in the show. Yeah. Um, and we're now deciding between us which one of us is going to do it. Or have we? <gasps> so we've just been given the programmes for the show. Now, we're not seeing it until later this evening, but it's because there is a page inside that shows you the Jamie makeup look, and that's what we're about to find out more about now with a live makeup demonstration. I'm excited. to be a model for a 12-minute drag transformation that mirrors the actual 12-minute drag transformation they have to do for John Partridge as Loco Chanel in the show. So we're on a little break now, uh, but we just came to check out this little installation and photo opportunity that they have in the foyer. So that's literally the Strand over there. And this is the Strand Palace Hotel. Yes. Oh, look at that. All of the details here. Oh, it's the hotel logo and the show. Ah, oh, smart observation. Aaron James. He's handsome and he's attentive. There you go. And you've got a cute little... Hello. Hello, this is a great time to talk to you about the outfits we're wearing today. Come join me, Aaron James. Aaron's got his nice new 
polka dot shirt on. Yeah, Is that Tebeka? Nice. Hades Town beanie because we saw Press Night last night. But this and isn't from the UK, it's Broadway. It's Broadway merch, everyone, but we are obsessed. Um, I've got sparkly denim jacket on from Zara because, like, Jamie likes denim. Yeah, the the Jamie look at the end of the show famous look is, is denim y and then I've got like I'm feeling very Gen Z today with my hair and like the jeans and the slightly I say the slightly untucked shirt the untucked shirt and this is ABBA Voyage checkerboard merch going on and look at all of the little details here we've got the school bag we've got the shoes we've got the mood board name those name those name those drag queens even more up there, you gotta love it. Okay, one delicious dinner later, I had some lovely corn fed chicken, delicious mash, uh, sticky toffee pudding, and a starter terrine. That was it. Uh, we have headed over to the Peacock Theatre to see everybody's talking about Jamie. I'll tell you a little bit more about the show in just a second. But first of all, the theatre. This is the Peacock Theatre. It's on Portugal Street. You can Google it, but this gets forgotten among many of the West End theatres. I feel like even if you asked, like, hardcore West End theatre goers, this, I'm willing to bet this might be one of the last ones they would remember. Uh, but it's a stone's throw from the Strand. It is not far at all to walk from the Aldwych Theatre, where Tina is, or... Um, the Novello, where Mamma Mia is, or the Gillian Lynn, uh, where Standing at the Sky's Edge is about to open. It is nearby to all of these other spaces, uh, but it's down a side street, Portugal Street, that you're seeing behind me. You can see, there you go, all of the, everybody's talking about Jamie stuff on the corner there. And I believe, there you go, signs for the Peacock Theatre. It is real, it does exist. Seek it out. Come and see some shows here. Peacock Theatre. Now let me tell you about the show while I am perfectly silhouetted. That was foolish. There we go. Can I like go alongside it? Yes. Everybody's Talking About Jamie is a British musical that was on the West End a few years ago. It started its life as a musical in Sheffield at the Sheffield Crucible. It's based on a British documentary. So fun fact, How to Dance in Ohio, not the first show based on a documentary. Um, this is based on the true story of uh, someone called Jamie who wanted to go to their school prom in drag and that is what happens in the musical. This current cast here uh, is led by Ivano Turco who was introduced to the world as Prince Sebastian in the original West End cast of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cinderella. For this production he is joined by returning stars Rebecca McInnes and Shabna Gelati from the last West End run. Uh, John Partridge is also part of this show and Giovanna Fletcher for this run as well um, and many other stars who I'm sure I'll be telling you about later but that is everybody's talking about Jamie. It's currently on a UK national tour and it's here in London for an extended stay between the 8th of February and the 23rd of March. I was gonna try and work out how many weeks that works. I'm not doing quick maths. I've been doing a lot of eating today and my brain is food. Um, but it's doing a little sit down in London here at the Peacock Theatre as part of that tour. So if you don't have the time to catch it here, you might be able to catch it elsewhere around the country. Speaking of which, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna go and see the show. Aaron's here, he's not in drag anymore. Did you have a nice time turning into Loco Chanel? It was fun. I think especially knowing that that's the person that does it every show. You could tell. You could tell. You had that authentic Loco look. Yeah, it was fun. And it's... I know, it was a really fun experience. You looked great. Yeah. You looked great. Yeah, I like that you still have a little bit of glitter in your beard. Yeah, a little bit of a shine. So once you enter the Peacock Theatre on that top level up there, that's a bag check that you're seeing up there with the security staff, you will then come down some stairs and you'll see the merchandise desk here, which also sells snacks. There you go, snacks on offer there. And I will show you some of the Everybody's Talking About Jamie merchandise. We have pens. We have a nice poster there, UK Tour 2023 to 2024, with Ivano Turco as Jamie knew. We also have these cute little enamel pin badges. The, so the show is set at a school, so we have that little prefect style badge. And you can also get the show's cast recording there. Here are the prices of all of the merchandise items. And it shows 
some t-shirts and those are the t-shirts in question there you go we've got a blue one with glittery font and a white one with red glittery font those are both very cute i might get that blue t-shirt i like it very much we also have programs we got given some of these earlier but just in case you want to know they are five pounds because i don't think it's listed here plot twist you guys they are out of t-shirts so i will not be getting a t-shirt it's good lighting in here why can't i work out where it's coming from there it is there it is this is the bar area i i was gonna say we're, we're not on this floor though are we not on this floor no this is the stalls this is the dress is it i've never been on this floor before oh this is the dress excuse me we have to keep descending i'm glad you were here i've just fully wandered out i thought, I thought you were about to talk about how like nice the dress circle bar is i was about to talk about how the stalls bar stresses me out and that wasn't the stalls bar no i was like oh i like this i was like why does the stalls bar not look like this there you go we're about to enter the stalls bar is this merchandise desk also going to be out of t-shirts because there's another so. one behind me i no assume so there. i have t-shirts here oh there you go there you go okay you know what time it is it's time for view from my seat i am in m28 of the stalls at the Peacock Theatre and this is my view of the stage. There you go, the rake is decent, I have to say. And they've done it so that like I am sat between two seats. So good stalls layout, good job Peacock Theatre. Getting ready for the show. Very excited. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
my god, hey! Hello! Oh my god, hey, by the way. So, it is a few days later. Yes. Because that was Wednesday. Yes. And this is Sunday. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone's had a lovely weekend. What a day that was. It was. At the Strand Palace Hotel. Very and bougie. And the Peacock Theatre for Everybody's Talking About Jamie. Um, I'm not even sure what to talk about first. You've just seen the curtain call of the show, so we'll talk a little bit about the show. Mm -hmm. I've reviewed Jamie before here on my channel years ago um, when I went to go and see the reopening show in the midst of COVID, when mm -hmm. they like wrote COVID-19 and the pandemic into the show and they had masks and social distancing and all of this stuff, yep. which I had mixed feelings about, but we're far enough from it now that that's all gone. And I guess they've gone back to... They've taken it back out. It's basically gone back to the original version, but with edits to um, certain pop culture moments, because they like to keep Jamie set in now. They don't like it to feel like specifically dated. Yeah, yeah, so like Pippa, Mid Pippa Middleton has been removed, so it's now Beyonce. Beyonce. Beyonce, who was like, I love that it's Beyonce because Beyonce was a pop culture reference before Pippa Middleton and continues to be one after yeah. because of the enduring legacy of Beyonce. Shout out yeah. to Beyonce. Good for you, Beyonce. Um, but obviously, you know a lot about this mm -hmm. because you've seen this show, do we know how many times? Probably 13 or 14. Um, Sensible. Sensible mid-teens. I mean, I saw it when I, I was invited to see it on its, like first time they were inviting people to see it in the West End. Um, Do you remember what year that was? No. 2017, 18? Probably. Um, but I was there the same day that Andrew Lloyd Webber saw it, because he was walking around at the same time and like all the creative team were chilling at the back talking to us all about it. Hobnobbing. Because it was the first shoulders. time they were trying to get people in the industry's like, gauge on it. Yeah. Which was cool. Yeah. It was cool to see how it's changed so much since and the casts have changed and just like those characters have evolved so much since. We've each seen a bunch of casts. Mm -hmm. We've each seen like John and later I guess you saw Luke. I saw John Luke in town, saw Leighton on tour. I saw Noah in town as well um, when it reopened mid pandemic. Um, and uh, Ivano yeah. is now leading as Jamie. Every bit as good as Every other yeah. Jamie I think I've seen on stage. I think this cast in general are just like every bit as good as every other cast member I've seen before in these roles. Particularly enjoyed John Partridge because yeah. you were saying... It feels like he's paying homage to Paul O'Grady, which I've not seen a um, any of the, the past Locos really do. There's, there's a lot of duality that he plays between Loco and Hugo... The transformation, characterization-wise, is bigger than I think I've seen. Like the others, like like become more flamboyant and yeah. they become more effervescent, and they're like Hugo, who's Hugo? But the the voice is so completely different. Um, we got to hear from the the show's current makeup artist that John has like very specific ideas about what he wanted his loco Chanel to look like, very like Marlena Dietrich, nineteen thirties, yeah, uh, inspired, and it's um, this very like. American Grand yeah. Dame versus doing a a very good like Sheffield accent. Yeah. It's a it's a very big difference and probably the best I've heard Loco Chanel sung. Yeah, best I've heard it sung, and also I just feel like I feel like it's probably one of the first, one of the, the first Hugo's where I fully like believed like yeah. Hugo fully. Like I've loved some of the other Hugo's, but I think there have been a lot of straight men playing not Hugo everyone not everyone always... feels completely natural in drag and when you yeah. have the whole show being about jamie like finding his way with drag loco as the guide there has to feel completely secure and natural and confident obviously i saw bianca del rio <clears throat> and that yeah came I didn't get to bianca. um but I, I thought john partridge had that as well very yeah. comfortable very comfortable yeah. was John Partridge. Um, and then you get the other side of the show, which is the beautiful emotional performance by Rebecca McInnes and that whole relationship mm -hmm. there. Um, but yes, thoroughly enjoyed. Everybody's talking about Jamie. Yeah. The things that like charm me about the show and surprise me, it's like the dance talent within the, the show's younger ensemble. Yeah. And when they do that piece in When I Met Myself Again, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of, it's very different to the rest of the show well, it, it, it links to Kate Prince as a choreographer because that, like she's Zoo Nation yeah. and 
um, the original cast, like the performers she had selected were people that had worked with her before. Yeah. But um, she, it's also interesting because it's it's bringing ballet in because it's a part of her. So yeah. yeah. Literally that, literally yeah. that. Um, I just love that dance is the storytelling language for that moment of the show. And there's a lot to be proud of about this show. It's one of um, the British, because we talk a lot about Six, and mm-hmm. Six being the thing that like ignited this boom we, we might be about to experience of new British musicals, which is very exciting. Obviously, mm-hmm. many new ones coming this year. Um, but Jamie may have been the forerunner to that yeah. as well in a time when not a lot of new British musicals were getting off the ground. And it is very quintessentially British as well, which is something I like about it. And it sells well. Like, this is this show's kind of proven itself to both not just be, like, be able to become a commercial hit, but also to tour and to now be a thing that people generally are aware of yeah. as a musical, which... It's really impressive to say that it's not that old a show. No, no, that's a really good point for it to have become like a recognizable title as a new musical. It's a really hard thing yeah. to do. So good for everyone's talking about Jamie. It's currently at the Peacock Theatre until the end of March. Um, and then continuing its tour around mm-hmm. the UK. You can go and see it at a theatre near you. Go and check those tour dates. Um, but also if you want to go and see it at the Peacock Theatre and have a really full experience, go and check out the Strand Palace Hotel because they're doing this partnership with the show. And I just want to talk about that for a second because we've said before Mm -hmm. multiple times how important it is for London and London-based businesses and brands to embrace the theatre community and this amazing cultural asset that is amongst them and this fantastic thing about Mm -hmm. London and how we want to see more of this partnership and this uplifting and a celebration really of the theatre industry. And that's what this was. This is like a financial support. This is a business like putting money and support behind a particular theatre, a particular company, a particular show. And that's really great. Yeah, it's when you go to New York, all the businesses love the fact that they're on Broadway and they'll make sure it's clear like their links to theatre there'll be theatrical things there'll be you get this vibe that you're in the theatre there's things to do in the daytime that are theatre adjacent and then in the West End we don't there's not many businesses that do celebrate we don't it. have a schmackeries we don't have you a, don't see those a show drama collabs. bookshop we don't have dress circle anymore we don't have <clears throat> show themed cocktails at nearby bars we don't have like businesses embracing the theatricality of their neighbourhood. There's only places like the Fitz Cafe Diner that, like, mm. have that element, and hopefully this is a good sign that things are changing. Yeah. But shout out to the Strand Palace yeah. Hotel for this the installation. That little photo spot in the immediate foyer is so cute. Mm-hmm. I love it so much. The attention to detail is fantastic. Um, but then also the theatre-themed afternoon tea, which is not Jamie-specific. It is just themed to the idea of theatre, and it's so cleverly put together in terms of, like, what theatre is, and mm-hmm. it tells a story, even, like, the way they had the menu being this origami unfolding cake and this idea of, like, the play within a play. So clever, so brilliant. I hadn't initially realised that a lot of the names of the items on the menu refer to specific shows that have been at the Peacock in the last year, some of their dance shows and Jamie and yeah, brilliant and delicious. Do you have a favorite thing that you ate of the whole day? Either in the afternoon tea or the dinner? Ooh, I mean, I'm always going to say a scone. So it's just, it's always going to be a scone. I enjoyed the scones. The chicken, the corn fed chicken I had for dinner was really good. It was very good. Yes. That was was really good. good. Um, and then also the the prawns that you didn't think I was going to like. Yeah. That I didn't know if I was going to like. Love those prawns. Those are some good prawns. Mm. And then do you have a favourite thing that you drank? Because there are a lot of beverages. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, the tea that you had was really nice. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? I was ready to talk about this. And though the cocktail with the popping candy... That was very fun. ...was delicious. And a, a lovely glass of Prosecco and a lovely Chardonnay. It mm-hmm. sounds like we were doing a lot of drinking. I will say, this was a 20-minute video. that We were maybe there for 10 hours. Mm-hmm. Like, with the show as well, this was a 10-hour event. Um, and so, yeah. But the tea 
so good. Yeah. I need to know where I can find that and have it several more times other than by going back to the afternoon tea at the Strand Palace Hotel, which I would. Yeah. In a heartbeat because it was lovely. Oh, we did get a little Jamie goodie bag. We did. Courtesy of the show and their makeup brand partners at Barry M. Let me see if I can briefly show you what's in there. I'm going to let you be the QVC. So these were the elements that make up the Jamie look. If you get your program from the show, they show you the list of all the products, so even so you know what to get and to buy. Yeah, obviously we are not makeup influencers. I know my yep. way around um, a face of makeup, but it's been a while. So we have a Barry M um, Tropical Heat Wave Powder Bronzer. Tropical Heat Wave Powder Bronzer. Lovely. Just chuck it at me. Uh, Barry M Chisel Cheeks Highlighter Cream Duo. Which I will be using regularly. A Barry M mascara. Fe Feature mascara. Length Mascara. Yep, this is Barry M Lip Liner in red. And then we have a Dazzle and Define Metallic Crayon. Dazzle and Define Metallic Crayon. How Marianne. exciting. Like I said, I can do makeup. It has been some time. Um, but maybe I will take it upon myself to try and recreate the Jamie look. The Jamie look. I also think we might have one oh, more thing here. Yes. We do. We have a Barry M matte lipstick as well. Comment down below if you'd like to see me attempt this. <laughs> maybe. Maybe at some point. Uh, but while we're talking about makeup, you got to do a full drag transformation. I did. As part of this event. Yeah. What was that like? Chill. <laughs> it's kind of I think when you when when a like a professional makeup artist that has worked on so many cool things um is putting makeup on you is really really relaxing. There was one particular bit while I was editing it and I was like you just look like um uh, like a pet that's being pampered at one point you were just there just like quite contentedly. It's like when you go for like a haircut or something when you're just like this is fun. But then the, some of the sponge blending was starting to look slightly more violent as we were nearing the end of the 12 minute countdown because all of the I edited it down that was like just over 12 minutes that that whole yeah. transformation took and it suited you thank you indeed you look <laughs> lovely you look lovely if you want to see uh, more pictures and uh, more of Aaron's drag transformation we're going to be posting that over on Instagram and go TikTok. follow Aaron James UK on Instagram A-E-R-O-N and TikTok <laughs> and TikTok there you go um, but thank you for joining us yeah. for a lovely day at the Strand Palace Hotel. Thank you to the hotel and the show and everyone for inviting us and for treating us to such a lovely day. Go and check out the show. Go and if you need a hotel to go and stay at while you're in London, go and check that out. Go and try their afternoon tea. You don't have to be staying there to book in and go and have the afternoon tea. Go or and check out. Or the pre-theatre dining. Or the pre-theatre dining. All of these things. Go and check them out. Uh, comment down below with your thoughts about everybody's talking about Jamie. If you've been to uh, this hotel before, if you've tried the afternoon tea already, I think it's been running since January. Let us know. Um, and all your thoughts on Aaron's drag look as Loco Chanel. <laughs> and should we try the makeup? Mm. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. Bye-bye. Bye. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>